Hello everyone. Good morning. Today is 5th of February. My name is Sahil and welcome to the newspaper analysis. So guys, let's start with the today's newspaper. Now in the today's video, we will be taking up the entire analysis of the Hindu newspaper as well as we'll also see the good articles from the Indian Express explained section. Guys, today I am at a little bit different location. So let's hope that everything goes good. Connectivity problem doesn't comes in between. However, if there's any problem in between, please tell me that particular thing, uh, write a message. Okay, so first of all, let's see the overview of the articles and let's try to understand that which articles will be important for our examination and which articles are not important. So first of all, uh, today, uh, let's see the Indian Express explained section. The first article is talking about the freedom of religion and attire. The freedom of religion and attire. Basically, recently a controversy had happened into the Karnataka. So with respect to the fundamental rights, we'll see this particular article. Okay, good article. Why Facebook users valuation have declined? Not, not at all important article for our examination. Then further moving on. So we now come to the Hindu newspaper. Now see, every day we take a different section that is a text and the context section. But today is Saturday and on the Saturday, the text and context section is not published. So we will directly be jumping into the Hindu newspaper. This is the page number one and the first article fine, not important at all for your examination. Fine. So basically in this entire page, nothing is important. Here we can see that government has provided that disinvestment deals matter, not the target. So we have seen in our budget video that this particular year government has kept a very modest target for the disinvestment fine and this particular thing has been questioned that why such a low target is there so it is just because of the fact that into the past whatever targets have been there they have not been fulfilled so this particular year realistic assessment has been kept fine so just that's it however this disinvestment all all concepts we have already seen and with respect to that nothing is there into this particular article so please ignore it then further moving on in the city sections of opening of uh, the schools and etc has been mentioned the advertisements are there nothing very much important into this particular direction is there fine so guys as uh, we'll be moving on here uh, here we can see that there is one particular article that has been mentioned and this is actually a very good case study for our ethics paper we'll see this thing then after that further moving on other articles not important for our examination then uh, one more college in Rupi entangled in hijab row. So with respect to the violation of fundamental rights, we'll see this particular article along with the Indian Express article. Interrogating the false merit reservation binary, we'll see this article with respect to the GS paper number two. India calling with quite a lot of trade in mind. So we'll see this article also. Then the die is cast. So basically this is talking about the Uttar Pradesh elections and the political dimension is there in this article. Not important for our examination. Please ignore it. Then the sex and violence. So this article is talking about the marital rape. Fine. We'll see this article. Then the Saturday. Today there is a ground zero report that comes. Now this ground zero report an untimely death and it's ugly aftermath. So a suicide by a, a, by a girl in the Thanjavur. So this is talking about that. Now usually the ground zero reports they are written as what had happened step by step stories on some of the case that happened. It is on that. For our examination this article is not important. Please ignore it. Then. Further moving on, remove remove uh, penal clause from the population bill. So the population bill, what it is, we'll see this thing. Then Rajya Sabha debates use of private bills to amend preamble to constitution. We'll see this article. Then other articles, fine. The political news, etc. is not very much important. Fine. Uh, Rajya Sabha over the uh, need. Okay. So basically, uh, this particular article is talking about the need uh, with respect to the Tamil Nadu. However, with respect to the UPSC, please don't go into this article. Fine, not important. Yesterday already I have explained that what this particular thing is all about. Then this article is important aware of data theft concerns on e-passport. So this e-passport initiative fine which has been announced in this budget. We'll see this uh, about this. Then after that uh, this particular entire page is filled with the political news. Okay, so please ignore this entire page. Nothing is there. Then further moving on. After that, guys, the deaths by the COVID, etc. is not important. Now, this article, villagers resist a sanctuary tag for the Langur habitat. This article is important for our ecology environment. So, we'll see this article. Then, further uh, <clears throat> moving on into this particular direction. After that, uh, the China-Russia uh, hal hail a new era of relationship. We'll see this particular article. Then, China-Pakistan Inc. new CPEC agreement. So, guys, see, uh, 
no need to go too much in detail the pakistan economic corridor is there india has a problem with this china pakistan economic corridor what is the problem this china pakistan economic corridor passes from the region of pok pakistan occupied kashmir and this particular territory is disputed because it is claimed by the india clear it is claimed by the india so it is a disputed territory into this particular direction we always have a problem whenever some kind of a development comes into the cpec and as now some new development is coming so it is obviously a concern it is obviously a concern for the india so that is something that we have to then guys further moving on after that uh, basically nothing very much with respect to the examination has been there so the metas stock they have went down all those things the tvs groupings all these things have been provided the evolutionary trends are there is it clear so all these are the things guys uh there was just one more article uh fine yes this one article 22nd law commission to study the ucc this article also we are going to take it fine so these are guys all the important articles into the today's newspaper and then finally the sports page is there fine so let's now begin with the analysis of all these articles one by one in the detail now every class we start with the gs code that can be used in one of your gs in one of your papers so today we will be taking the quote from the ella bhat ella bhat so ella bhat has been the founder of the seva ella bhat has been the founder of the seva which works for the empowerment of the women it builds the capabilities into the women so the ella bhat has been a very prominent women rights vocalist in the india he says it is our more moral failure that we still tolerate the poverty now guys this particular quote is very impactful because up till now the poverty has been called as something an economic problem but the ela but had provided entirely a new dimension onto the poverty she had said that the poverty is not an economic problem it is a moral failure of a society at the collective level the, the society has failed that we are not able to provide the dignified dignified life dignified living to the people here even in the capacity of a state state had failed to endorse that particular thing state has been given the mandate in two places in the constitution number 1 there is the fundamental rights and number 2 there is the di directive principle of the state policy particularly into the dpsp the state has assumed the role to provide the dignified living to the people even into the article number 21 where the right to life is there only the life is not to be given dignified life is to be given and when the poverty is there the conditions of dignified lives they are eroded so this is a failure constitutional failure even a moral failure we can use this particular idea into the essays on to this particular line and even into the gs paper number 4 we can utilize this particular quote so please use it and now let's take the uh, articles but before that guys as we are taking the mcqs so first of all let's see the correct answers of the yesterday's mcqs so yesterday there were the four questions which we had asked from that previous day's newspaper so first of all the question number 1 its correct answer is c both the statements which were asked they are correct clear the both the statements are correct now this particular question was the question on to the israel's mapping because now the india and israel had completed 30 years of diplomatic relation so both the statements that were there they were correct israel is located on to the eastern end of the mediterranean sea and then the jordan is the longest flowing river so the answer is c then the second the, the second one here the answer will be d second the answer is d so this particular answer was with respect to the rape of a women statement one is incorrect because india is one of the 50 country which has not outlawed the marital rape in india fine marital rape is not a crime in india second question was with respect to the rape of a women who has been separated from the husband now guys for that particular thing there is one specific section that is a 376b recently it has been used also it is a very rare provision so when the rape of a separated wife is there okay it can be punished but not as per the normal laws in the normal laws there can even be the death penalty but here the punishment of 2 to 7 years is maximum given clear so the uh, here the correct answer is answer d fine then the third question it is answer the correct answer is answer d the detailed solution has been given here and the fourth one the correct answer is b clear it is it was about the mg narega fine the women have to be given the one third of the beneficiaries need to be the women correct answer is answer b clear i will be sharing this entire pdf on the telegram channel the explanations you can see there also or you can pause the video and then also you can see it
so this is the correct answers for the yesterday's um, question and mcq questions fine and uh, i have seen all of your answers who had posted them it is very good please keep on posting that fine maintain the streak maintain the tempo now the questions for the uh, today today's question so today we'll be taking the two questions question number one is with respect to the taxation because the budget has been announced recently so the question it talks about the two statements taxes collected directly by authorities constitute a major part of the earning of the government second uh, that is the payment done for interest is lowest among the revenue expenditure made by the government of india what is the correct statement you have to choose it pause the video see the question and post the correct answer in the comment box then question number two you need to arrange it from north to south so yesterday we have taken an article on that basis it is there so identify the correct option and post your answers fine pause the video and post your answers into the comment now moving on so taking up the first question uh, sorry the taking up the first article freedom of religion and attire freedom of religion and attire now guys what has happened and why this particular article is important so first of all let's understand the background of this particular article see recently in the karnataka recently in the karnataka there are certain girls who have been uh, refused to wear the hijab now hijab is a part of their attire but they have to wear the hijab it has been refused now this particular thing has become a controversy it has been said that refusal refusal to wear a dress is the violation of fundamental right now when a person is wearing a dress as a part of their religious ritual if you stop them then it is the part of the violation it is the violation of the article number 25 where the right to religion has been given so this particular article becomes a controversy and it is therefore we need it to see as the part of the fundamental rights in gs paper number 2 now let's see basically the issues related to this particular article now when we talk about the india india is a secular state india has india is a secular state and it has provided the right to religion equality of religion fine now into this particular capacity we have article number 25 in the constitution of india article number 25 sub clause 1 it provides the freedom of conscience and the right to freely profess practice and propagate your religion is it clear now when we talk about the uh, uh, the practice of religion when we talk about the practice of religion wearing a particular attire which you feel that belongs to your religion it can be allowed under the article number 25 number one now when we talk about article number 25 article number 25 guarantees a negative liberty now what is this meaning of negative liberty it actually places a restriction on the state that you cannot do certain activities by which you are restricting a person's right to religion so a negative liberty is provided a restriction a restraint is provided onto the state they cannot interfere clear and into this particular direction stopping a person from wearing a hijab or all such kind of things is a violation of article 25 but within the article number 25 there are certain other things also that are there now under article number 25 there are the reasonable restrictions that are there it has been provided that the state can restrict the right onto the grounds of public order decency morality health and other state interests so on the basis of all these particular things this right can be restricted also and now stop wearing other hijab can it be a reasonable restriction can it be stopped or not so this becomes a controversy who will come and who will decide on to this particular matter obviously the supreme court will come because the supreme court has been made the, ga the guardian of the constitution even the gar basically the gar guardian of the fundamental right supreme court is there so it can come and it can decide into this particular matter now guys the supreme court where there are certain important judgments that have been there now only this case is not important guys with respect to the secularism gs paper number one also this article will be important so what are the important supreme court judgments in this direction so the most important judgment of supreme court please keep it in mind it is a very very important judgment it is the shirur mutt case of 1954 shirur mutt case of 1954 now in this shirur mutt case of 1954 supreme court came out with the essential religious practice test essential religious practice test now what is this essential religious practice test let's understand it supreme court provided this that when we talk about the religion when we talk about any religion in religion there are two things that are there one is the essential practice of that particular religion 
and other is the non essential practice of that particular religion essential practice is one which is very much important it is central to that particular religion and essential practices a person can carry or nobody will restrict that particular thing then there are the non essential practices now non essential practices can be restricted fine we can stop a person to perform these non essential practices i'll give you one example here not provided into this article but try to understand it now the jainas okay jainas they have a particular practice of santhara in santhara the jainas they will not eat the food they will not drink the water they will purge this particular body is it clear and what will happen there will be a kind of a they will leave this body slow death will be there is it clear now why uh, basically this thing was actually appealed into the rajasthan high court it was said that this santhara which is being done by the jainas it is nothing but a suicide it is a suicide and at that point of a time suicide was a criminal activity now the suicide has been decriminalized at that point of time the suicide was a criminal activity clear that particular thing happened so therefore at that point of time rajasthan high court provided that this santhara it is a non essential practice it is not not central to the jainism and they said that santhara cannot be done so so they restricted the santhara so basically this essential religious practice test is very very important in determining the secularism of india in determining the secularism of india is it clear where it came it came into the shirur math case that is one thing now understand who will determine okay uh, understand this particular thing that who will determine that what is central to the religion and what is not central to the religion what is the essential religious practice it will be determined by the supreme court now this thing has been many times criticized it has been said that why the supreme court will be determining what is essential to a religion is there any competence into the supreme court to decide on that matter no so people had criticized this thing many a number of times this is one dimension within the secularism that is there and there is one particular term that i want to tell you here that is often used and please note down this particular term in your notes judicio papism judicio papism okay judicio papism what is this judicio papism when the judiciary becomes too powerful and interferes in interferes too much in your religious matters that is called as the judicio papism now the supreme court as in their 1954 shirur math case it has provided that we will tell what is essential for your religion we say that in india also we have seen a judicio papism judiciary interfering too much in religion is it clear this is something this is something please use it in your mind uh, sorry please use it in your questions the uh, the issues with respect to the negative aspects or the problems with respect to the secularism in india how many times it has been breached okay now coming back to this particular article that we were discussing so with respect to determining the issues with respect to the religion i have told you that there is a essential religious practice test now further moving on now further moving on so basically uh, after that guys what has happened the the question with respect to what is allowed as a part of religious practice to wear okay this particular thing has been uh, basically uh, apply as has been uh, seen in many of the different different judgments we will be just be seeing that particular thing in a minute but one more thing i wanted to tell you that this religious essential religious practice test has been applied in some other kind of instances also for example for example what happened in 2005 in 2004 sorry the supreme court into the uh, in, it provided that there is an anand mark marg sect and in the anand mark sect what they do they perform the tandav dance uh, the tandav dance onto the streets now the supreme court said that in the anand mark performance of the tandav dance that they are doing onto the street it is not an essential religious practice of their religion and because of that particular thing they were not allowed to perform that particular thing the supreme court what it has done it has interfered here now talking on to this particular case that what you can wear as a part of your uh, religion this thing has been discussed in two of the judgments but both of the judgments had given the conflicting thing there is one anna bint bashir versus cbse case of 2016 by the kerala high court kerala high court here had provided that wearing a hijab constitutes an essential religious practice and wearing any kind of dress is your essential religious practice whatever you want you can wear six they can wear a turban muslim women they can wear a hijab it is allowed okay then there comes the another judgment which has provided some different kind of view point here another judgment is there 
Now, what is this judgment? This judgment is Fatima Tanseem versus State of Kerala. Now, this particular judgment has provided that collective rights of an institution would be given primacy over the individual rights. So, collective rights are more important. If institution says that no, you cannot wear, then that institution will have more of a supremacy. So, collective rights are more important than the individual rights. And by that logic, you can stop a person from wearing the religious attire. Clear? So, conflicting judgments had come. So guys, what is now needed? Now it is needed that the Supreme Court comes in between and Supreme Court basically with the higher majority decides that actually what is to be done. And till that matter, basically the clarity on this particular thing will not be coming and many a times the fundamental rights will be violated into the name of religion. Fine, it will be violated into the name of religion. So this is guys in this particular entire matter and guys with respect to the fundamental right, we can use this particular thing. So this is about it. Fine. I hope that uh, this particular thing is now clear. Just uh, guys give me one minute. Okay. Uh, there is one comment that has come in between. Uh, Sir, does Supreme Court has the power to form a body of uh, members to determine whether practice should be continued or not? Yes, Supreme Court if it wants it can do that thing. Okay. Now moving on to the next article. Okay, so guys, this particular article we have taken from the Hindu newspaper and it actually is a very good case study that we can use in our examination. Now, what has happened first of all into this particular case, I will tell you and then we will see the application. Okay, and this particular, uh, there is some attachment also that I am going to give you here. So, in the Arunachal Pradesh, in the Arunachal Pradesh, it was seen that uh, in one of a town, in one of a town, now the name is not very much important, but if you want, I can give you, it was the Miao, fine, Miao in the Changlang district of Arunachal Pradesh. It was seen that the youth, they have become addicted to the drugs and in the evening time, in the night time, they are consuming the lot of drugs. Because of that particular thing, the quality of life of the youth had declined considerably. Now, in this particular capacity, in this particular capacity, the additional deputy commissioner, Mr. Sunny K. Singh, who was posted there, he decided to change the lives of the people there. And he played a role of a positive influencer. He played a role of a change maker. And what he did, he actually provided, he actually provided the sports kit. He provided the uh, sports kit. He uh, basically um, uh, repaired the stadium that was there. Okay. And all the facilities were provided to the youth so that rather than going into the drug abuse and all such kind of things, they can involve in the sports and all such kind of activities. For that particular thing, for that particular thing, he had taken many of the important, uh, important steps. For example, he had decided to nudge the people. Okay. And then what he has done, he had basically a football come cricket ground that was there into the bad shape. It, he had just allocated the money for repairing that also. And by collecting, by bringing the community members together and by pooling the fund, he is actually providing the sports kit, etc. to the people. Now what has happened, an attitudinal change has come into the town. Now the, now the youth, they are playing rather than use, going into the drug abuse. And what is the result of this particular thing? Because of this particular initiative, now this basically this particular town's team, they have won the gold, two gold medals and two silver medals in an international event. So what has happened? The youth who were involved in such kind of thing, now they have been changed. Their attitude have been changed. And this is the attitudinal change that the civil servants, the public servants need to bring out. Now, what is the importance of this particular development? See, you can use this particular thing directly as a case study in your GS paper number 4 answers. See, many a times when we are writing the GS paper number 4 answers, they are just hanging in the air. You need to substitute it with examples, with the examples of administrators, IAS, IPS officers. The moment you put that particular thing, it immediately increases the probability of your marks. Now, one more attachment I would like to give you here. See, this was the opening line of the last year's economic survey. So last year's economic survey chapter number one started with this particular uh, shlok from the Mahabharat. It says, Aapati pran rakshahi dharmasse pratmandukar. Aapati pran rakshahi dharmasse pratmandukar. What it says? It says saving a life that is in jeopardy is the origin of the dharma. 
clear now the people involving into the drug abuse okay what happened the quality of life had considerably declined and here the intervention done by the civil servant has led into saving of a life and this is the true dharma by which a civil servant by which an officer needs to abide so the true dharma has been performed and this particular example you can write in your answers of ethics paper number four so please collect these kind of examples for every topic in your ethics you have total eight topics in your ethics you have total eight topics 31 keywords are there in this entire GS paper number 4. Now out of this 8, 7th is the case, uh, 1 is the case study. In total you have 7 topics. Every topic you need to have at least 2 to 3 examples, the case studies which you can put and this is the thing which will make your answer different. And what type of case studies we need to see? Such kind of case studies. I can give you some other exam uh, examples also. Fine, few days back we have taken one social influence example also. We have taken example of civil servants, yeah, so the, the citizens activism where the citizens forum against the hate politics we have seen just two days back. So collect these all examples. Now moving into the next uh, article. 22nd Law Commission to study the UCC Uniform Civil Code. Okay, so the 22nd Law Commission will study the Uniform Civil Code. Let's understand that what this Uniform Civil Code is. First of all, where this particular thing will be important. It will be important in GS paper number 1 as well as GS paper number 2. GS paper number 1, diversity is there. GS paper number 2, fine. The fundamental rights and rights issues are there. So there we can use this particular article. Now understand first of all, what is this UCC that has been mentioned. So we have the directive principle of state policy in our constitution. Is it clear? So our constitution, article number 36 to article number 51, there is the directive principle of state policy. Within these DPSP, there is one particular article that is the article number 44. It talks about the uniform civil code. Now, what is this uniform civil code? Understand this particular thing that actually there are, there are the criminal laws and then there are the civil laws. Fine. Now, the criminal laws are there. For example, somebody had committed a murder. Somebody had committed a rape. Okay. So, for that particular thing, there will be the criminal law that will be applied on that thing. We have Indian Penal Code. We have Criminal Procedure Code. CRPC, we have IPC, we have clear. Now, in the criminal offenses, in the criminal offenses, there is a common code, common law. For example, IPC is there, CRPC is there. It is applicable on everybody, irrespective of their religion, irrespective of their gender, irrespective of their caste. Fine. So, for criminal law, fine, there is a kind of a universality that is there. But guys, when the civil laws are there, now in the civil laws, there are particular subjects. Understand it very carefully. In the civil laws, there is succession adoption marriage and divorce succession adoption marriage and divorce now these particular things okay in the civil law in this particular in these four subjects particularly the people they have been given a freedom that with respect to their religion with respect to their culture they can maintain the different different practices is it clear? For example, when we talk about the adoption and when we talk about, for example, let's take the divorces there. So, before the 2019 Triple Talaq Act came, Triple Talaq Bill got passed. Before that, the Muslims, if they want, they can give the Triple Talaq to the women. So, the divorce, that type of divorce, they can do. But the other communities, for example, Hindus, they were not allowed to carry the divorce into such kind of a way. With respect to the marriage, with respect to the marriage, the consummation of marriage, different, different religion have different, different kind of, uh, different, different norms and they are allowed to do that particular thing. So, in the civil matters, this is the case. Why, first of all, in the civil matters, uniformity had not been brought up till now. It is in order to conserve the diversity. Fine, India boasts itself as the cultural capital of the world. And in order to conserve the diversity, in all these particular matters, the communities have been allowed to carry their practices. But guys, in the DPSP article 44 provides that whenever possible, whenever possible, bring the uniform civil code. So as on to the criminal lies, there is a unified criminal law system. On the civil matters also, on these particular matters also, we need to have a uniform civil code which is applicable on all the communities in the same manner. 
Is it clear? Since the 1950s, the attempt have been made to bring this Uniform Civil Code again and again. But up till now, the Uniform Civil Code has not been brought into the India. Now what has happened, the 22nd Law Commission which has been constituted, it will study whether the Uniform Civil Code can be applied or not. Before that, the 21st Law Commission also was given the task to study the UCC whether it can be applied or not whether it can be applied or not but the 21st law commission had up till now not submitted the report its time has actually been over in 2018 so now the 22nd law commission will be taking this particular matter this is just one liner news that was there into this particular thing but we need to have a analysis here which we do so let's take the analysis whether this dpsp is something positive is it something good or something undesirable so positives and challenges now guys first of all when we talk about the ucc we'll see both of them the positives and challenges one by one first of all taking the positive number one positive that comes of bringing the ucc that what will happen many a times into the name of maintaining different civil practices there is the exploitation of the women that is happening for example when the triple talaq was there who were the suffering women were the suffering so into the name of civil practices they are put uh, they are actually propagating nothing but the patriarchy and the women suffering women are getting miseries women restrictions women freedoms have been restricted for example when we talk about inheritance okay inheritance acquisition of ancestral property women are segregated women are discriminated they are not given the inheritance even in hindus also till 2005 hindu succession amendment act before that women were not given the inheritance so everywhere the women's exploitation happen and if we bring the uniform civil code the women will be given the equality to the men and therefore the women's suffering will go away so therefore the ucc is positive number one number two number two see what happens when we talk about the different communities having their different civil practices actually it promotes the feeling of separatism it promotes the feeling of separatism when you are a different community i am different community our marriage norms divorce norms are different than your norms it gives a feeling of separatism it gives the feeling of separatism which is not good it is bringing a kind of a it is not helping in bringing the uh, uh, in in uh, in bringing the fraternity so it is not good then thirdly thirdly article 44 is a constitutional mandate it is a constitutional mandate and dpsp whenever the capacity is there it should be applied so as a matter of constitutional morality as a matter of constitutional morality constitutional mandate is to be respected and it has to be implemented also then there are the challenges that come on to the another hand challenges number one challenge it is there that guys what had happened anytime whenever the ucc is, is is decided that okay we should bring it it has been seen as an attempt of hinduization it is seen as an attempt of the hinduization or the attempt attempt of homogenization now what is this hinduization in india 86 percent of population is constituted by hindus okay and when the ucc will be there obviously there will be a lot of influence of the ongoing practices on hinduism okay many of such kind of practices might get mainstreamed and it will increase a discontent a dissatisfaction in other communities that it is nothing but an attempt of saffronization attempt of hinduization and this kind of discontent is not good in a democracy understand that there was one there is a philosopher albert camus albert camus said that democracy is not the protection of majority it is the no uh, see he said that democracy is not the law of the majority democracy is the protection of minority so minority concerns are always very important therefore the ucc might not uh, take that particular thing in account it should not be brought second thing that comes here is that always we talk about the diversity that the diversity is the strength of india fine everywhere we talk about this thing now in the name of ucc what will happen that a diversity will be killed and there will be the mandatory assimilation that will come so this is something which are the criticism what is the conclusion what is the conclusion now guys the conclusion is such that we cannot maintain the status quo that is not to have a ucc and at the same time we also cannot impose it what we need to do there needs to be the consultative process there needed to be the 3d process there needed to be the 3d process what is this 3d process there needs to be debates discussions and deliberations 
there needs to be the debate, a discussion, and a deliberation with deliberation with all the communities, with all the stakeholders, and only after that, the, the basically this matter is to be reached. You will take a middle path, madhyam mark. Is that clear? So this is something about it. Fine. Now further moving into the next article. Okay, aware of data theft concerns on e-passport, Jay Shankar. So guys, this particular article is with respect to the e-passport initiative that has recently been announced by the government. E-passport initiative. Now this particular thing will be important. This particular thing will be important in GS paper number two. The initiatives of bringing the good governance. Initiatives of bringing the good governance and with respect to the fundamental rights, rights with respect, uh, fundamental rights, privacy issues also, this article will be important. Let's see first of all that what has come in this article. Now guys, e-passport initiative, I will explain that first and then I will explain that this particular article what is talking about. So first of all, background is important. So this is entire background. Background. Okay, so background. Now, e-passport initiative is being promoted by the government. Government had said that in 2022-2023, a new type of passports will come that will be the e-passports. Now these e-passports will have an embedded chips. So you might have seen the passport. Within the passport front or the back, there will be a chip. Which type of chip will be it? That will be the RFID chip. That is the radio frequency identification chip. Identification based chip. Now this RFID chip can be read by a reader. Is it clear? For example, you have your Metro card. You have your Metro card. Now this Metro card, it also has an RFID chip. You just tap it. It captures your details and you, your, for you, the gates are open. In this particular way, in the passport also, there will be RFID chip. The moment that particular passport will be scanned, it will be read by the uh, uh, airport authorities or wherever you are using it, it will provide all of your biometric data, your name, your basically passport holders name, other details, address etc will come immediately and by this particular thing, the authentication and identification can be done in a seamless manner. The passport tempering which used to happen, it will get reduced. Now this particular passport will be provided by the Ministry of External Affairs and the chip that is being integrated, this chip cannot be tempered. If there is an any attempt to temper this particular chip then that reader the system will detect it and will re and the passport authentication will fail so guys this is actually a very good step that we are doing and this is a kind of a good use of the technology that can be done but now there is a kind of a question that has been raised into the parliament what is the question? Question is that what precautions you are taking for ensuring the privacy and the safety of the data now into this embedded chips okay a lot of data your personal data will be put now how we will ensure that the data which is there it is safe so for that particular thing the government had said that we are aware of the data theft concerns and we have addressed that particular thing well you don't need to worry about it so this is just a one-liner thing that is there but this e-passport initiative is very much important and this rfid technology it is also very much important is it clear this is about it and now we'll be moving to the next article now this article again taken from the hindu it will be important for your gs paper number three ecology as well as in prelims examination for prelims examination also this article will be important now this article first of all it is talking about the golden langur that is there it is talking about the golden langur First of all, guys, uh, I'll tell you that what has happened in this article, what has happened in this particular article. So, in the Assam, in the Assam, government wanted that a village, uh, government wanted that a wildlife sanctuary should be developed. Wildlife sanctuary should be developed. Wildlife sanctuary should be developed. For whom? For the preservation of the golden langur. Clear? But the villagers, they don't want to have this wildlife sanctuary. Is it clear why the villagers they don't want to have this wildlife sanctuaries just we'll see in one minute but before that let's talk about this golden langur for whose for whom this wildlife sanctuary was being developed so when we talk about the golden langur golden langur it has been given the status of endangered onto the iucn red list and the golden langur it is found in the assam in india as well as it is found into the black mountain region a black mountain of the bhutan the status is the endangered on iucn red list further this particular golden langur it is also added into the schedule number one 
of the Wildlife Protection Act, Schedule Number no. One of the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. Now, the species which are added into the Schedule Number no. One, they are provided a lot of protection. They are hunting, etc. Cannot happen. So, a lot of protection is provided here, being in Schedule One. Secondly, when we talk about this golden langur, it is among the world's 25 most endangered primate. It is among the 25 most endangered primates. So, it is a very important one. Now, in order to preserve the golden langurs, because they are one of the most endangered primate and because they are into the schedule number one, it is believed that basically the right now they are a large number of their population is found into the Kakoi Jana forest. Now, this Kakoi Jana forest, it is into the Assam. So there is a lot of population of them into this Kakoi Jona forest. Now it is the government says that this Kakoi Jona forest that is there, it is needed to be converted into a wildlife sanctuary by the name of Kajoi Jana Bamuni Hill Wildlife Sanctuary. So it is needed to be converted into the wildlife sanctuary. Now the communities that they are living there, they say that no, it should not be converted into a wildlife sanctuary. Why? Because when the wildlife sanctuary status will be given, that large then the, their large number of rights that they have, it will get it. It will get. Um, uh, they will not be able to get large number of resources from the forest which they were getting because then the laws will become more strengthened. Their community rights then will be diluted. So whenever the national park status, wildlife sanctuary status is given, then the communities their rights are actually taken and the wildlife rights become more important. So therefore the villagers they want that rather convert it into a community forest resource rather convert into a community forest resource which will be which will be seen by both the government as well as the communities both of them will be taking care of it now the communities they say that into the past they have worked for the preservation of the golden langur and because of their preservation effort only decline has not happened rather the population of golden langur has increased what they provided? They provided that because of the conservation effort by the villagers, because of the conservation effort by the villagers, the forest canopy has increased from 5% to 70%, a very good example. Now, even this particular thing you can use as an example in the environmental ethics shown by the community. So, you can show, show that how into the Assam, the villagers, they have shown environmental uh, ethics by increasing the forest canopy from 5% to 70% in Assam. Then secondly, they had provided that the population of Golden Langur, it was 100 and now it is more than 600 because of the three decade action effort that has been taken by the community. So therefore, it should be converted into the community forest resource. Now, what are the tribes that are living here? So guys, with respect to the tribes also, this particular thing is important because onto the tribes, the question have been asked into the UPSC. They say that, okay, they give the name of the tribes and they ask in which state these tribes are found. So there are certain tribes which are found into the Assam, which are involved into the conservation of the golden langur. So they are Koch, Koch Rajabongshi, Boro, Koch Rajabongshi, Boro. Then there is Garo, Garo, Rabha and Gorkha communities. Okay, so again, I'll repeat. Koch Rajabongshi is there, Boro is there, Garo is there, Rabha is there and Gorkha is there. So all these tribes, which state they live, they live in Assam. Again, I'm saying which state these tribe live, they live in Assam. So these tribes are also there, which are important. Now guys, this is the entire, entire coverage of this particular thing. If any question onto the golden langur, I believe it, if it will come, you might be able to handle this particular thing. So please keep it in your mind and every year mapping based questions or on such line of questions, two, three questions are coming. So please understand it. Now we'll move to the next article. Now remove penal clauses from population control bill. So basically what has happened guys, there is a proposal that has been raised with respect to the population control, population control. Now what is this population control? Population control, it is any kind of a measure that is being taken by the government to restrict the population control and to restrict the family size. In this particular direction, when we talk about the China, when we talk about the China, China in their late 1980s and 1990s, China came out with the one child policy. Why? Because the China's population was increasing. Then what had happened after uh, basically 2015, China converted this one child policy into the two child 
policy and now in 2021 china is going for their three child policy so whenever there is some restriction onto the families that particular thing is called as population control now in india there is a demand of population control from so many years and now there is a kind of a demand a private member bill has been raised that population control needs to be brought into the india what is the difference between a private member bill and public bill so the bills which are brought by the mps who are not the minister those bills are called as the private member now the private member bill many of them they are not passed so the probability of passing a private member bill is very much less however a private member bill for the population control has been introduced so here this article will be important this is the background here now where this particular thing will be important in our examination in our examination there is gs paper number one and in gs paper number one there is a issues related to the population gs number one there is issues related to population there this particular article can be used now guys understand what are first of all the arguments that have been given that why population bill is needed in india now argument i'm taking because this is a very good argument that has been there please directly note it down in your notebook so it has been said that when we talk about india when we talk about india india had a land availability of 1.2 hectare per person so this is a land availability of india 1.2 hectare per person now the resources they are getting regenerated to the tune of 0.43 hectare only fine we have the land availability of 1.2 hectare per person but the resource regeneration that happens that is only up to 0.43 hectare so therefore the regeneration is not that much according to the article it has been said that the ecological footprint which we use and the gap between regeneration is 187 percent now understand this particular concept that suppose suppose your uh, father or your mother or some of your guardian they are giving you pocket money they give you 10 rupees pocket money but you spend let's say 20 rupees you spend 20 rupees what had happened now there is a gap that has come you had spent extra 10 rupees and now you are in a debt of 10 rupees why because obviously you had taken that extra 10 rupees that you are spending from a loan from one of your friend so you are getting 10 but you are spending 20 so what is the problem is that our ecological footprint is in a negative we use more but the regeneration is less we use more but the regeneration is less and the gap is 187 percent gap is 187 percent according to this particular thing if we continue into the same direction then into the 30 years much of our resources will be exhausted and people people they were not be able to live a dignified life and the dignified life is provided into the article number 21 of the constitution that is the thing second thing guys what i want to talk here is some additional concept i want to give some additional concept see there is idea of a sustainable development there is idea of a sustainable development what is the sustainable development your development should be such that you are not threatening the resources of the future generation there is one saying the saying goes like this that treat the environmental resources not as a legacy from your grandfather rather as it as a debt from your grandchildren here resources are not a legacy from your grandfather they are a debt from your grandchildren so this is the idea of sustainable development now there is 187 percent deficit that is there now because of this particular thing what will happen because of this particular thing what will happen we will obviously be having a problem into the future so what is the solution solution is control the population solution is control the population fine and therefore now the bill is being brought okay okay this is the thing the bill says that there needs to be the penal provision there needs to be the punishment if people are having more than two children if there are the three children then there should be the punishment that needs to be there clear that is about it now guys understand i will highly be saying you one thing with a uh, with a kind of i'll insist we are not needed to read this particular bill why because the bill is a private member's bill and a very big possibility is there that this particular bill will never be passed and even if it is taken then there will be a lot of amendments that will come in between so at this particular stage it is not at all not at all advisable to read the clause of this particular bill that is the thing but the concept is very important because last year the uttar pradesh government also came out with their draft population bill which also wanted to uh, which also wanted to restrict the family size so the 
uh, the, the, there are actually the this is first of all one this entire ecological footprint problem that we have seen it is in favor that why population control basis is needed now let's see what is the opposition what is the opposition that such kind of thing will not be good so opposition is something like this see guys when we talk about india when we talk about india what happens in india we are having a we are facing a stage of demographic dividend i told you last year i told you that india is facing a golden window of demographic dividend from 2020 to 2040 india's average population average age is around 29 years we have exceptionally young population now into this stage of demographic dividend if we will control the population what will happen there will be the immature demographic transition that will happen in india immature demographic transition every country has this particular cycle where they reach their peak population and their size of young population is also very much high here now if we will restrict the population control we might go something like this so there will be the immature demographic transition fine don't make it too complicated just very simple idea that our demographic dividend might not be able to fully leveraged that is one thing Second problem that is coming guys is that we have here the data from the National Family Health Survey 5. National Family Health Survey 5. It has just been released one uh, just just been released a few days back. National Family Health Survey 5 that in India the total fertility rate total fertility rate TFR is 2.0 2.0. Now the TFR of 2.1 is actually needed to stabilize the population. Total fertility rate of 2.1 is called as the replacement rate. Understand it, very simple idea. See, if there are two, if there are two people, okay, now if they will just give birth to two children, if they will give birth to two children, what will happen? They will die and then they will be replaced by these two children that have been born. So there is a replacement rate. When the replacement rate is achieved, the population will stabilize. The population will stabilize when the replacement rate will be achieved. What is the replacement rate? The United Nations Population Fund provides that the replacement rate needs to be 2.1. So when it will go to 2.1, population will stabilize. What is India's India's TFR right now? It is less than 2.1. It is 2.0. Who says National Family Health Survey 5? So automatically our population is going to be stabilized and there now to bring a population control bill doesn't make any sense. Is it clear? So this is something that why this population control bill might not be, might not be usable. One thing. Second thing, practical, practical example, the China. China came out with one child policy. But it is not successful. Clear. There is a kind of a population distortion that had happened. China had accepted that this uh, strategy has not been successful. And now they are coming out with their three child policy. They, nowhere into the work such kind of things have worked moreover reproductive rights are very important and reproductive rights are needed to be conserved and that particular thing might not be good moreover guys what you are saying you are saying that if there will be the third child then there will be the punishment now understand this particular thing it will have a psychological impact on that third child he will all he or she they will always feel that they were undesired moreover sex selective uh, practices will also happen if the two children have been there and if let's say both are the girls parents will if let's say one one child has happened and one is girl parents will go for sex selection and they will make sure that the second has to be boy only why because only two can be allowed so all these problems will come here so these are guys the issues however the bill says bill says that no we need to take some step this demographic dividend it is just not very we are not using it because our population is just being providing a cheap labor this is the argument given by the person who had raised the bill. But I believe that it is a mistaken belief. Cheap labor is actually the thing that is needed by a country in order to expedite their manufacturing. Fine. So these are certain of the things in this particular article that is there. Guys, this concept is very important. And if you remember this, if you understood this entire concept, your entire topic, one part of your topic of population control will be taken care by this thing. One part of the population. So this is about this particular thing, fine. This is about this particular thing. Okay. Uh, sex and the violence. Sex and the violence. Sex and the violence. 
So this particular article, uh, what it is talking about, it is talking about the issue with respect to the marital rape. Issue with respect to the marital rape. Now understand this particular thing. Okay. Uh, okay. There are uh, certain doubts. I can see what is the difference between the IPC and CRPC. IPC, Indian Penal Code, Criminal Procedure Code. They are simply the different legislations talking about the different different kind of offenses. Is it clear? IPC just talks more about the provisions and crpc talks about the conditions of punishment etc there are other differences also that are there not only this clear however please don't go into those kind of details that is not at all required for your examination okay please don't go that too too much into that what is the class live class timing 6 30 or 7 30 it is usually 6 30 but sometimes the times get little bit here and there it is because of the schedules sometimes okay uh 1.08 hectare per person in some book okay it could be there fine okay uh what can be the implication of immature demographic dividend it is that implication will be this that we will not be able to have the potential of our young population which we can okay uh okay guys Okay, if, uh, if, if you can see me, then please tell, are you able to see the stream? Now, moving on. Okay, fine. Now we'll be moving on. So basically, okay, marital rape. So in the past few days, we have seen that the marital rape issue again and again Okay, now uh, basically we are talking about this in this particular article about the marital rape, fine. Now when we talk about provided, but there is one of the Delhi High Court is listening that whether we should make it is a criminal offense, whether we should make it is a kind of an offense or this is the case that is going on. Now guys, only onto this particular matter, this particular article has come. So what has happened that 2016, the government has provided this particular thing that the marital rape concept cannot be applied to the Indian context. Why it cannot be applied to the Indian context? Because of the fact that there are large number of factors in India that is there. For example, the social customs of India are such, religious beliefs are such that the marriage is something which is sacred. Marriage, there is a kind of a pavitrata that is attached with the marriage and if such kind of an offense will come, then what will happen? The entire institution of marriage will be crumbled down. When if the wife goes to the police and files a complaint in that particular thing and let's say if the case starts, then this entire institution of marriage will be crumbled down. So therefore, marital rape cannot be, uh, be criminalized into the India. That was a 